Hello again. So today I thought I would take you along while I do some watering this morning. I did pull a lot of shade screens off some of the plants. It's been really hot, well over 100. And today it's only supposed to be 90, so I thought today would be a good day to water. It's nice and cool right now. I mean, it's early. The sun hasn't even come up over the trees. Where is it? Sun's like right in there, about to pop up over those trees. And uh, it's beautiful. It's cool this morning. So let's uh, let's get some some watering done. Look at all the stuff stuck in here. The gardeners came yesterday, and you know they're they're pretty good, but some days they do blow grass and stuff over onto this side. You know, I think they try to be careful, but, <clears throat> you know, it's not easy, and they got a lot of work to do, so I don't want to, <laughs> I don't like to be nitpicky about stuff. I figure if they, if they make a little bit of a mess, I can go through and clean it up. So first thing I have to do, sorry if I'm making you dizzy, is I got to get my hose out, which is not easy. That's why one thing that's nice about cactus and stuff is, whoa, you don't have to, you don't have to water very often, so I don't have to deal with this too much. Of I have these hoses that shrink and stretch, so they <laughs> they can kind of be tricky. And this one, look at this, it's got a hole in it. Oh, it's got another hole there too. So usually by the time I'm done watering this front side, um, my front side is <laughs> pretty wet. So I start off over on this end and my hose is all tangled i gotta stretch it out straight i think this is a is this a 75 foot hose i don't think it's a hundred foot i think it might be a 75 foot hose so i set it to shower for the stuff that i'm up close with and i'm fairly certain that my plants are all well rooted. So I just come over and I hit the sago palm pretty good. And I see that it is about to send up some new leaves. And it looks like it's got about four, maybe five new leaves coming up. So I'm pretty happy. This is the last one. The other ones have already sent up some new leaves. And I water this same as the cactus not very often and then you know I let everything dry out pretty good this is a my Echinopsis the closest I could come when I googled the flower was tubiflora it looked just exactly like the plant the flower was the same color it kind of had the same shape um, and it grew the same way because there's you know so many different varieties so I'm guessing, but this plant was actually given to me um, years ago, like about, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. And it was a little round kind of a clump, but you can see how much this baby's grown. And I have gotten a ton of pups that I've taken off. I've given a lot of them away. Um, here is my Trichocereus cutting. I believe I got this at Poots Nursery, and I'm pretty sure the owner there, Bill, told me it was a uh, Validus. And it was one that had fallen over, and so they chopped it up and sold a bunch of cuttings. And I, of course, uh, grabbed one. <laughs> I was so excited to have it, too. And it had buds. I picked, they had a bunch of cuttings. I picked the one that was covered with flower buds because I really wanted the flowers. And, um, you know, just hoping that they wouldn't, that it wouldn't drop all those buds. And it didn't. I've gotten probably six or one, two, three, four. I think I've gotten six blooms off of it. But it's got two more right here that are coming up and a new arm coming off. So that's exciting. And uh, yeah, it's doing good. I hit my little Nepalis. Usually this one, I just wait until the, um, the new leaves start to look kind of shriveled before I hit this one with water. But I'm gonna go ahead and water it since I'm right here. And then this, I just like to rinse everything off up here good. It gets so dusty here. So this is my agave perii with its 
little pups growing there. And this, you see that water, it just runs right down. We set this at a real pretty steep angle. And all of this, all of the dirt out here, can't really tell, but it's pretty mounded up pretty high. And it's all a really well-draining soil, so the water will run right through. My little barrel cactus over here, looking good. Let me peek down under there. I don't really, it's got, you know, it's got a little bit of sunburn on it here and there. Um, but it's been out here in the full sun. I did plant this earlier in the year before it got real hot, so it acclimated. And my Sahara, I have not pulled all these dead leaves out of here, which these, I think some of these will pull right out. But I kind of want them to protect these little pups, and it does have a lot of new pups under it. But the top is looking really good. It suffered over the winter. It was, uh, it, it really, uh, it struggled. But yeah, it's doing, uh, it's doing really good. And it was in a. Oh, now wait a minute. When did I do this? Did, I did this this year, right? Did I do this in the fall, this wagon? I can't remember. I could swear this thing was up here through the winter, but I'll have to look it up. So my Cameroni eye is doing really good. I see all the new growth is coming in green. It's got quite a few little pups down in there, but it is, um, it is really happy. And don't fall, I've got <laughs> you know boulders and rocks and the tongue from that wagon I got to be careful not to trip over anything I got a few little weeds here I just you know I, I watch for them and I just try to pull them out as I see them I did come through here um, I don't know I guess about a week ago and I hit some of these that I can't pull out I hit them with Roundup I have toads that's a toad poop right there but yeah, some of this, little bits of grass sneaking in. Just get under the gravel here and it pulls right out. Those come out really easy. And those, so those I just pull. But I did have to hit some stuff with, with Roundup. So get some water on this sago palm. Now look at this one. This one looks really rough. It looks like something's been digging up under here. And I probably should start pulling some of this out. But it's got pups. I think it's got another one back over on the other side. Ooh, and the Sahara's got some pups under there. Um, but it's starting to look a lot better in the center. It's got a lot of new growth down in there, sending out another flower bud. I did cut one of these bloom spikes off because it was kind of laying down on the ground. And I really wanted it to focus on, you know, recovering from looking so horrible. That was one of the ones that came from a grocery store that one of my husband's buddies was out in front of the store and it had these two big echeverias on the outside here and they were pretty cheap and so he grabbed them for me so that the one on the right here looks really good um, the one on the left struggled a lot more but what I'm excited about is look at the pups there and it's got another big one back in here it's kind of oh, kind of hard to see but there is another big one so the flowers look really good. I don't see any aphids or anything on any of these blooms. Some spider webs here. Oh, I can actually see the little spider. I don't know if you can see him. Where'd he go? He's right down in here. Where is he? I can see him. He's a little teeny tiny. We'll leave him there and if any aphids show up, he can take care of those for me. So now, I'm going to try and carefully drag my hose. I'm getting wet. It's nice. So I've got this one. This was rooted. I don't believe this was a cutting. I think, I mean, at one time, it, I'm sure it was. But it was probably a cutting that they did to propagate. But I did get this one also at Poots. And it is Trichocereus. It's a hybrid. It says it has a fuchsia with orange flower. And um, there is this bud on here still. So I'm really hoping that it doesn't lose that bud. It's been a long time. I've been watching it for 
well actually since I bought this plant so hopefully a little piece of gravel out of there get off of there I do like to give them all a good rinse not just really watering them but everything gets so dusty my giant barrel well giant to me it's it's pretty big but like I said before it was the biggest one I could afford and I really splurged on that one because I wanted something with some size and I mean that thing is it's uh almost two feet across I don't know if it looks that big maybe a foot eh, like a foot and a half across. well you can't really see but if I put my hand way down there it's hard to tell when I, I move the camera around it kind of changes the perspective and it doesn't really look as big as it actually is but I do have some some kind of grass or something growing out of here and a few little weeds under there but I need to come out with my tweezies my little tweezies and get those weeds because the spines on this thing do not bend they are really sharp that doesn't even really need water it always says once established and I wouldn't really consider that plant established yet next year I would consider it established but for now oh and you know what I had to cover my whoops hold on don't get dizzy don't fall over people <laughs> I know I'm I'm rocking the boat here uh, but my milii was starting to get a little more burned and uh, hasn't put off any new flowers yet it's just that old one that's kind of faded but it does have new growth way down at the base and coming off the new stalks coming off so it's it's doing good and I try to protect it when the sun gets really bad. My little Aluaudia is growing good. I'm <laughs> washing all my gravel off because I'm not really paying too close attention but let's get some water on there. And let's see we're gonna go back this way and I try to kind of straighten up my little my little uh lava ribbons as I walk through because the animals are constantly see how they're messing up all the black I need to add some more black and make that look a little bit tidier but that's a project for another time when I'm bored all right whoops hold on <laughs> okay whoa so now We'll hit this aloe vera. This thing is really doing good. It, this was all kind of a mauve color. And now it's really coming in green because I have been watering it really regularly. A lot of these aeoniums. It's interesting, these aeoniums in the pot right there are pretty closed up and dormant. But these ones that are in the ground right in front of that air vent gets a lot of cool air coming out of there. They're, um, they're not really as dormant as I thought because they are uh, they are winter growers so they're typically dormant in the summer you know in areas where it's hot now I have seen them in people's yards where it's cool and shady all day okay hold on we're going for a little ride here um, where it's cool and shady all day where they don't really go dormant they stay open and you know they're they're doing really good but here they do go dormant. So this uh, <laughs> uh, Porta Lacara, let's see under here. Whoops, <laughs> it breaks off really easy. The elephant bush. So I got that aloe distans in there, and I've got a bunch of echeverias and stuff. And then back under over there, there is a milii with yellow flowers on it. It's you know, this stuff seems to be happy under here, so I haven't cut this thing back. Portolacaria can grow pretty quickly if it's happy. And that one has really taken over. I will trim it back. I need to cut off all these uh, blooms on here, but I haven't yet because they, they are providing a little bit of kind of filtered shade for those plants, so I sort of left them. And... Uh, you know they don't look too bad a couple of them are, are dead dead but check out my check out my sea dragon this thing is really happy never shows up really on camera the way it actually looks you know the camera 
does not do these plants justice, but this thing is just massive. So it's one in the ground. I have another one in a pot that's not nearly as big, but I've had it longer, which is funny. So this Cameronia is pretty much completely green now. So it's well rooted in there. It's happy, it's not stressed. Um, but what I might do is cut a couple of the pieces off on the sides because it is a bush aloe. And if you can see down in there, it just keeps sending up shoots. So if I chop a couple of those and just reset them in the dirt with no roots, they'll turn red. And then I'll get a little more of that red color that I really like. And this little clumping back here was doing quite well. And then that, let's see if I can point, that big plant there took over and all the little ones under it are much smaller so I don't know what variety that is but it's really competing for some space over here but I'm gonna leave it because it is shading some of the little ones there were most of them I think I planted five plants right there next to the Sahara which has got pups like crazy with both little pups all around um, and uh, that was the biggest one but it is kind of protecting the other ones and they're all four are ruffled and i think one is that little purple one which wasn't ruffled and they seem pretty happy i see my cats have been over here making a mess so this um, petalanthus macrocarpus hadn't done anything since i planted it and then all of a sudden it had finally started to show me some new growth and leaves and then it got really hot again and those kind of fried a little bit hold on i gotta watch my feet here so i don't fall but it does have way down in the base down in there if you can see it some new growth coming in so i'm pretty happy about that um i've got this uh that's an agave bracteosa just a little tiny baby one it's got a lot of new growth i do keep that one covered i pulled the screen off so i could water it and my quiche con is doing really good let me soak this down here is my this was a Hesperallo, this one right here, my pot with sedum that has really taken over. Got another Echeveria Sahara. Um, this one struggled over the summer. I didn't cover these because they are bred specifically to um, take the extremes that we get, the heat and the cold. And so I want it to really acclimate and uh, you know, I planted this side up, I believe, in November last year. And so, look at the blooms on this, though. I mean, that is just crazy. The... <laughs> how There's one, two, three, four separate ones. And uh, if I get down inside, I don't know if there's any new ones. I don't see any new ones coming out. But look at this one. <laughs> look at these. These are just nuts this one's huge and this one it's got three separate flower stalks off of one big long piece so okay with water in here that is my uh calanchoe lucier i believe this one is and god it looked horrible over the winter i was gonna pull it out it just looked dead but it really came back i should have trimmed off some more of the you know dead pieces just to make it look nicer but i didn't and uh all the new growth is really covering that up so i don't typically want to water you know that was supposed to be an aeonium sunburst in the pot that yellow one there but it's like yellow with purple i haven't seen that color but it's not quite dormant i mean it's still opened up i did set it right in front of a nice cool air vent so that air comes out from under the house. I still haven't done anything with my Calavera pig here, but I will. My Pringly eye looks good. We'll give her some water. Just really let that run through, make sure it gets all the way down in there. And these do have all cactus and succulent soil, so they should get really good drainage. Um, the Opuntia that I got from uh, a woman in 
I'm thinking New Mexico. We were coming through New Mexico. She had this beautiful garden out front. Oh, okay, water all my little guys up here. There's water running down the hose, which is kind of laying across me now because I'm stretching it up and it's just soaking me. <laughs> so, but am I getting all this on camera? This little, this is a cereal bowl that I have this stuff in. And this was like, I had a, an, a yeah, that's from the agave filifera and then a little portulacaria, afra, variegata, and some ruber tinctum. These were just little tiny cuttings and I just threw them all in that bowl. I had them in the house. Once I brought them out here, they've just taken off. So I need to pull those out and probably stick them in the ground somewhere. Maybe I'll do that in another month when it cools down. So this is my Mangavi Silver Fox. Is that gorgeous or what? Look at all those pups. Yeah, that looks, oops, am I over here? That looks amazing. The color on this is just stunning. I love it. It's really filling this spot in. And this Euphorbia milii, which really died off in the winter, starting to come back. So I've got, I believe, California poppies because I planted those in my flower thing and then they start, started popping up everywhere. So I just left them, see if they actually get flowers. Got all these little stacking crassulas there. Here are my rainbow hedgehog cactus. Um, it's, they got a long name, I can't think of the name. Um, another one of these, Pilosocereus. This was sold to me as Azurius but I don't think they are because they don't even they're not even trying to look blue they're green 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 so I think they're they're not the blue but they're beautiful anyway and they're really cheap and I got actually four separate cactus that were really big for forty dollars because I chopped the tops off of that one and that one's sticking up over there if you can see where is it it's right next to that um, it is right, I think right there. Um, so they were inexpensive for what I got, but I chopped the tops off of both of those, put them in a pot, they're taken off, those are rooted and growing, and then these ones, which were already rooted, I just went ahead and stuck in the ground and they've taken off. And they should be fine right there next to the house for years. I don't think they'll get bigger round, they'll just get taller, which is fine. And here I got a little rum runner, doing good. This was the replacement for the one I originally put in that did not take our winter very well. So this year I'll throw frost cloth over that. And hopefully we won't have as cold of a winter as we did last year, it was crazy. So I get this Sahara, I got another one. And this one also has quite a few little pups under there. I really want, to be able to start pulling these Sahara pups off and plant them in other places. These plants are expensive and it's hard to find them up in Northern California because the grower, they are, uh, what are you, patented, copyrighted? You know, so you're, you're not allowed to, you know, it's not like a regular plant. You just can't just propagate them and sell them or whatever. I just heard a door slam in the house. Um, you know, so you gotta buy them from, uh, you know, just a few places that have them. That, you know, every now and then I get lucky and I find one at, you know, up here at one of the local nurseries. But they're always so expensive. It's crazy how expensive. Now, if you go down to Waterwise, I bought four of them. They were $10 a piece. They were smaller ones. So I grabbed four of them. But the ones I bought up here, there were two bigger ones that were $40 a piece. They had four. I bought two of them because I wanted to leave a couple in case somebody else wanted one. I didn't want to be too greedy. And uh, so, but they're all doing really well. So I'll be able to pull those pups off and have a ton of them. And uh, so that makes me happy. So here we are watering the front and we get, I haven't watered anything over here in a while. Um, there's only a couple of plants on the porch that I, that I actually water every day. <laughs> my feet are getting wet. The water's going right through the holes in my shoes. So I just want to soak everything here good. Especially this plant. 
it wants water. God, sometimes twice a day when it's really hot. We got a little aloe down in here. Um, this is an Aeonium Pink Witch, which I brought out from behind my greenhouse. It was doing amazing, and it just just got fried here. So, and um, a little cactus up here. I don't water very often because they they stay in the shade. Now, this stapelia, this was given to me by a woman at a, I went to her garage sale, and we. You know, she had some plants and we started talking about them. She took me in the back. She had this amazing plant and it was just so full. And they, these are the shorter stalks that she gave me. And they got stressed and turned purple and then got attacked by mealybugs. So they're doing good and they're starting to go back green. So I think it's going to be okay. And then here I got these Euphorbia um, obesa. I, these are, they've got to be hybrids from the look of them. That's an actual real one. We got that one from Poots Nursery. I believe this is a hybrid too, just from the ridges on it. It's not smooth. These ones are really ridged. And I paid $4 a piece for these two. So I can't imagine that they're um, actual pure um, obesa, but you never know. So this poor plant, which you know, I keep trying to kill, but look at all the new growth coming in on these dead stalks. So I've been really diligent about, diligent about watering it every single day and keeping it happy. And it's really seeming to come back. It's one of my favorite plants. So these little guys, my uh, cuttings that I got from Planet Desert, those three, um, two of them are rooted. The little skinny one in back is not, and you can see it's a lot scrawnier, but these two actually are rooted. And I came out this morning and that was sitting on the ground right there. And one of them, this one here, had been pulled out. So I'm assuming the cats knocked it out or something. I don't know what happened to it, but it, it was okay. I stuck it back in there and it should be fine. But you know, we get everything really soaked. And then we'll start on this side over here. But I will be right back. I gotta go change my battery. Okay, so I think I got, I had to go change my battery, and uh, I actually took a little break and had a bowl of cereal while my camera cooled down, because it gets really hot. These GoPros really, they really overheat. I love this pot. Those Pringlii, they are amazing. These are little ones. They're so different. These were both listed. Actually, I think they were in the same pot as a Pringly eye, and uh, they're so different. This one on the right is more blue with white spines, and this one has more of yellow spines with green. So I don't know, that's strange. But yeah, they're doing, they're doing really good. This little pot, my coin plant isn't really doing anything. It started putting off new growth, kind of in, you know, on these little tips here, and then, you know, up here, and then all the new growth just kind of fiddled, fizzled, fizzled, fizzled out. Look at the color on these. I think this is a dolphy eye, the sedum. That red just is so beautiful. And then my Thonocapensis is almost touching the ground. This one's not quite as long. It gets a little bit hotter over here because it's in the shade later. And so this middle part kind of burns, but this one um, is doing really good. I still need to pull this apart, chop up all these, uh, uh, what is that? Cotyledons. I think these are cotyledons. So those all need to be cut, cut off and reset. Um, this little, this is one of my $10 Saharas, but it has a lot of pups. So I love that. And this Euphorbia, that was a gift at one of the nurseries. We bought a bunch of plants, but she gave me this cutting and it's got quite a bit of growth. So I'm pretty sure it's rooted. And then I, I believe this agave is in the Potatorum family. And then another Euphorbia snowflake I love. Whoops, doing really good. My Mexican fence post cactus. 
give her a drink. And then I just got a lot of little random stuff down in here that's kind of tucked away so it doesn't get so hot. Like, let me get my hose in here. I kind of got to focus when I drag my hose around that I don't pull a plant out of its pot. So in here I have these two, it's in the bromeliad family. Um, it's called strawberry flame, but they were like almost dead and look at the color They're They should be red. So there's a lot of green down in there and the leaves are coming back out. So they are coming back and they get a lot of shade down in there. So I think they're happy. And then my, my poor Japanese maple, this gets a lot of shade, but you can still see how fried the leaf tips are, but it is tucked back in the corner. So there's not really much else I can do. Um, these two cuttings hanging down over the edge are actually laying on the ground now. <laughs> it's all rooted in here, really happy. Um, that little Christmas cactus back in there or Thanksgiving or Easter cactus, whichever it is. And then a few more small ones I bought at the street fair last, well, this month actually. I just have them tucked in here until I find a place to put them. So they're all doing good. The sense of area has got all kinds of new growth. There's lots of little pups, so it's doing good. I was a little worried about it at first because it just didn't look great. But check out the Fred eyes. Man, those are amazing. This thing, that's just taken off. So it soaked this really good because it likes to be watered. And like I said, I haven't watered anything in well, probably at least in a week. Get that soaked down in there. Careful of my hose. Give my little euphorbia here. This is a trigona. Okay, this funny little thing, which I don't remember what it's called. So here, <clears throat> this is the pot I put together not too long ago. And I cannot believe the Petalanthus macrocarpus. Look how I had to pull it out. I had it tucked up against that table. I had to pull it out because it's gotten so tall that it, I mean, it's a good six, eight inches above the table. So it's, it likes this spot. Um, I don't even remember what all's in here. This thing, whoops, I had one little cutting and it had the prettiest flowers on it. So she gave me a cutting of that and it, I don't know what it is, but it's really taken off because it looked like it was half dead. So get this little sedum back in here good. And then my monkey cactus that I just got a couple of weeks ago. Doing really good. This I had covered. I just pulled the shade screen off of it just so I could water it. And then these guys are getting really, really scorched over here. This is, uh, oh gosh, what I always have to think about the name. It's, um, mm, starts with an S or a P. It's in the Wandering Jew family, and I got two different varieties, and they're so pretty. Um, they are called, um, 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 cannot remember. You know, when you're not trying to think of the name, it just pops right into your head, but when you're trying to come up with the name, good luck. <laughs> and this is like the... Look at this way back in here. All the, it's kind of brown, it's actually not burned. Those are just the spent flower blooms. This plant is so happy here. It's down on the ground, it's growing through the vent. I had to pull it out at one point. But sadly, my Aluaudia procera um, has never leafed out. I don't think they're dead, but I never got leaves. I, I need to pull those out and I don't know, redo something with that pot. I just, I don't know, I don't really want to. Ooh, got a little a little tree frog hanging. Whoops. <laughs> and he's gone. Okay, what well, where was I? Back here. Um, so what is this stuff called? It is called Tradescantia. Okay, so T, not S <laughs> or P. Tradescantia. Yeah, those are two different variety varieties of that. And then we'll get all these little guys. Keep filling this up with water. I haven't had my fountains on because Oh, there's a frog in there too. Um, because the water evaporates so quickly and I forget to come shut it off and I don't want to burn out the little motor on the pump. 
but I try to remember to fill it with water. Um, I think that Gymno Coliseum is turning up its toes. I think it just, I should have had it in deeper shade somewhere. I don't think it's going to come back. That thing <laughs> is suffering. This one is suffering. It just got so hot. And I just don't have a lot of places to, to move some of these plants, you know? So I'm like, if you guys want to live, you're going to have to, you're going to have to make it. You're going to have to toughen up. And sometimes they do. And sometimes they don't. And I keep forgetting this cup has no drainage in it. I don't think. No, I never put a drain hole. So I got to stop watering it. It's just a little ooh, guest area cutting. I'll deal with it later. Um, it likes water, so that's good, at least. It does like to get a lot of water. Look at that sunburst. Is that one beautiful or what? You know, that thing should be really fried like all the rest of them are right now. Look at this one over here. The leaves are kind of getting burned, but the metal still looks good. It gets mostly shade. Just gets some morning sun. So, yeah, that's everything over here. Just wash it all down. And I really like to sow these a couple of times. See, my hose just gets caught everywhere. Um, because the water just runs right through these. I have a really gritty soil in here. And uh, just look at that. Uh, is that oh, Maybe that's California sunset, this sedum. Look at the red. God, it's just beautiful. I can't get over the color on that. Um, the blue elf is doing really good in here. It's got little pups popping up. I'll have to pull this one apart too. The, the cotyledon on this side looks really good. It's I, I believe it's mint truffle. I think that's what this cotyledon is, mint truffle. I got a little aloe distance in each one of them. And of course my Echeveria Sahara. Now this one does not have any pups on it. But that one and that bowl actually does so I don't know why but sometimes they do sometimes they don't this poor thing really got fried look at the leaves now this was supposed to be full sun in our area and the full sun is really hard on it so I did covered a couple of days and now you can see it's got a lot of new fresh green growth so it, it likes being covered up a little from that hard sun but check out the flowers oh my gosh they're gorgeous I don't know what it is but it said it will grow like a tree so I gave it its own pot now these things have really taken off I really have to get under here because they're in a under a palm tree to reach it with my hose um, and the nice thing is they're shading these um, what do you call these? I always think of them as like grandma plants because your grandmother always, begonias. You know, I think everybody's grandmother grew begonias. I never did, but now they're getting really good shade back in here from the palm tree. Are you gonna really take that? Spud, don't eat that. Come here, drop that. I don't know if begonias are toxic, so I really don't want him eating the flowers. Just it's amazing how many plants really are toxic to animals. You just have to be careful. I know I'm up close, but I have to bend over to get down under here to water these. But I forget what these things are called, but they gave them to me out at Big Oaks Nursery because they were, you know, all root bound in these little like three, four inch pots and they hadn't been sold and they were so big and just blooming out. So they were just giving them away just to get them out of there. And so I took three of them and uh, when the sun comes back towards me, it goes, the sun goes over that direction, over the house. Um, those shade the begonias. And in the morning, and when the sun is straight up, I think this is a Mexican fan palm that I did not plant here. It just popped up in the middle of a little rose, but it shades it. So that was a perfect spot for it. I don't know, let's see how much hose do I have left? Can I keep pulling? Oh, God, I got about 20 feet more. So let's get, this is what I do in here. Look at these little plants here. These ones were, that I got from my friends that were so infested with mealybugs and little tiny and half dead. So I treated them and treated them and treated them and they were just filling in really nicely. I got a big Pearl von Nuremberg there. It's got pups. I don't know what these are. Um, 
Just a lot of rat. Looks like a little Vera Higgins on the end, but they're doing really good. And then I got some more. Uh, that one, that is a cotyledon mint truffle. This, I believe, is a, is that cow and coli? I don't know. It, it, you know, they're, they're pretty similar. Or is it a, I don't think it's a, um, you know, the ones in the, the jade families are all, are all the jades are in the family of, um, what is it? Why is it when you're trying to think of a name that you can't? I don't know. I just don't know. My little milly eye is doing really good. You almost can't even see the dead stuff from over the winter. It. I haven't really gotten any flowers. It's still recovering, so I'm assuming by the time it's fully recovered from last year's winter, um, <laughs> it'll start going dormant again for the, for the winter this year. But all my little ghosties are beautiful. They got such gorgeous color. They're like that icy greeny blue with some purple and pink on the ends. Another Dickia. Um, this little agave is coming back. Look at the size of the pup coming out here. It's so much better. This thing was really struggling. I pulled it out, trimmed it all up. Now here's something that's interesting. Let's pull the hose a little farther. Until I run out of hose, I can come this far. Um, uh, this, oh, that's what I was going to say. Like, what was I going to say? So, you know, the Aeoniums are summer dormant. So that big one there, which I believe is a Zwartkopf, is really going dormant. It's closed up and it's not looking great. Now, I do have a shade screen over that. I took it off to water. But look at the one on this side. It looks like it's still really growing. It's closed up a little bit, but I think this one might be a Merlot. I don't think it's silk. I think silk has a smaller, tighter um, rosette. But that one's still huge. We'll give it a little water. I don't water the Aeoniums too much because, you know, they're not really even supposed to be growing. I have these two little Echeveria neon breakers down here. And I just noticed this one's got pups on it. A couple here and here. Um, I don't think this one did. They look horrible. <laughs> they're really struggling. But they got pups. I should cut this bloom off of it. So it's not struggling so much, but I haven't. I'm going to water these guys. This is an aloe starry night. Um, these are the two cactus. Ooh, look at that weed grown in there. I got these like a month ago. Oh, come here, hose. Cooperate. And then up here, I just didn't give everybody a drink. I don't always water the mammal areas. You know, they're kind of especially the ones in a pot because you know they can be a little persnickety about water a little totem cactus here i do cover it because you can see it was starting to get a little scorched there this cutting from poots from last year look at the new arms on there i'm still waiting for this flower to open i really hope it blooms out for me i'm assuming it'll be a white flower got my little Hey, watch where I'm pointing the camera, so probably pointing it off at the roof or something. So I just give these guys not too much because I do water them fairly regularly. Look at the size of this thing now. Ooh. This little euphorbia has got this is a lactia, was it ghost? I think, and all the new arms on it. I did bring that one in in the winter last year, I'll bring it in again this year. So soak all these good. And then step back so we don't trip. And then here, all this stuff is doing really good too because I did cover it. Last year I did not. I planted this section of the garden right here from here to here is a year old. This went in in July last year. And so everything's really filling in and, you know, just stuff's taking over, which is, is what you want. So I'm, I'm really happy about that my little barrel colony here my little baby barrels get my shadow out of the way so you can see those i do water these because you know they're so small they should be rooted i did lose two of those little baby barrels last year and then i replaced them they just rotted we got so much rain over the winter and they couldn't handle it so i kind of water put those little gymnos and all this stuff back in here so I have all of these 
You can see all those Sempervivums right down there. A couple of them have bloomed out, so they'll die. But I do keep a shade screen over those because they, they're supposed to be super hardy, and in the winter they are. But in the summer, um, they struggle when that direct sun hits them. This is one of my Cameronii cuttings that is completely gone back green. You can see the tips are still really pretty red, but the whole thing was red. So that one's rooted. I should pull it out and chop the roots off. And maybe I'll do that when it cools down next month. It's only supposed to be 90 today. It was really cool this morning, so I thought that'd be a good day to water. But it is going to heat back up. We're about to go back up over the hundreds again, I guess, next week. Look at the size of the pup. Ooh, there's another little one stuck in on the rock. Did I notice that before? I think I did. I think I did see that. I should move that rock out a little bit to give this, ouch, baby, a little more room. There we go. Give this little guy some room to stretch his legs. This one's getting big, so I'll be able to pull that one off. I could pull it off now if I wanted and uh, reset that somewhere. But yeah, that's doing good. That's another agave um, perii. My little sedum that I stuck in here, I see they're all taken off. I can see all the nice fresh green growth. I did chop all the flowers off of them. I have another stand of it right down in there. So I just kind of water and then I come back and I hit it again. So it really runs through because I won't, you know, I won't water again for another week or so. There are a few things. Oh, this is my, this was my first mangabi. This is a purple people eater. And you can see he wants water because you see how his leaves are starting to kind of curl in. They're usually flat. I haven't watered in a while, but look how beautiful the color on this thing is. And all the pups around it. So it's really filling in this, this spot, but I love mangabies and all the different colors and varieties that they have now. All right, I'm gonna go switch my hoses. Okay, now I come in from the other side with another hose. And I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. I'm washing all the gravel out of my plants here. So and now I'll hit all of these ones really good. So in here, look at this little tiger jaw. It was just a little tiny plant and it has spread so much. It's like six inches across now. Probably four or five inches wide. Where am I getting it on? I'm showing up here. I need to show here. I have a tendency to look at what I'm doing and not the camera screen. So I, I, I miss where I'm filming. But this Cameroni eye, I did take a big cutting off the side over there because it was it was growing sideways towards this blue pot here and almost on the ground. So I chopped it off and I reset it in a pot. Actually, over there, did I water it over there? I don't even know if I pointed it out. I don't think I did, but it's growing over on the porch in the shade. So, you know, cause it's kind of, it's hard on them when you cut them, um, when you cut them off. Oh, look at the little Halloween pig I, I got the other day, my husband found that. I think we we're at Walmart or somewhere. I can't remember. Tractor Supply, actually. I think we got it at Tractor Supply. My hose is stuck. Hold on. Ugh. So now, I'll turn that up higher, and I will put some water back here and really soak these Semper Vivum. Sorry about that. I had to pull some hair out of my eyes. <laughs> if I'm making you dizzy, moving too fast. So I'm gonna get all these little guys soaked really good. I know my shadow's blocking it, sorry about that. And I got another Fred Ives. You know what, I don't think I mentioned here. These Fred Ives here, I have two of them in here, and they were so infested with mealybugs last year, so I was treating them, and they were just growing all weird. I didn't even know if they were gonna survive it. And uh, they got a lot of new growth, but they're doing really good now. No sign of mealybugs on them. And uh, so I'm happy about that. Now I need to step in a little bit. I've got so much stuff in here, I can't really get to where I want to get. Um, but I just kind of, you know, I just let the water hit them a little bit. Look at that euphorbia. 
So that was, it's probably doubled in size since I got it. That middle skinny part right there, from there up is all the new growth. So I got it in the fall. I did get it last year in the fall because I remembered, I could, last time I was talking about it, I was thinking I got it in the spring, but it was in the house through the winter. I had it sitting in the house in a pot and I would bring it out during the day to get it some sun when the weather was nice, which wasn't very often last winter. So I really want to soak all this stuff. But yeah, it's really taken off and it's got one, two, three, four, five arms coming off of it. Um, I'll definitely have to figure out what I'm gonna do with that eventually. My problem's gonna be the pot that it's in, just the pot itself is really, really heavy. I don't know what it's made out of, but it weighs a ton. And then with the dirt, the top dressing, and that heavy euphorbia full of water, plus everything all here on the ground that I don't, I'm not going to want to step on. I'm going to have to get that pot out of there at some point. And um, I can probably leave the plant in it for a long time, but, or you know what, I probably could just knock the arm off that back because it's going to grow out towards the house. The rest of the arms are on the front. And so they'll come out this way, but if it gets too heavy on one side, you know, then you could risk it falling over. So I don't, yeah, I don't know. What does Laura Eubanks always say? Decisions will have to be made. <laughs> But not right away, you know, um, maybe in the spring, because I'm the growth should sh slow down over the winter and I won't be able to bring it in the house. It'll be too big. So I'll have to I'll have to protect it with um, probably some frost cloth. We don't get like a hard freeze here. We get at night, you know, a lot of times and especially last year, we had a really cold winter. It will. Sorry, my hair is in my eyes again. It will uh, get down to 30 degrees and sometimes even down to 28. Um, but it only lasts for, you know, a couple hours at that temperature. So, you know, it'll be in the mid 30s all night and about five, six o'clock, it'll hit the lowest part. And then as soon as the sun comes up, it goes right back up. So it doesn't stay cold, but it was enough to do a lot of damage to my plants because it was almost every night it seemed like for two months it was so just crazy cold and we don't usually get that cold you know we'll have a cold snap that might go for i don't know a couple of weeks we'll get down into the low 30s but it was really cold last year colder than i can remember for you know so so often so many nights in a row so hopefully this year won't be nearly as cold oh let's check on our little crest here so we got a, I got this little stapelia and I noticed it was cresting this piece right here. Oh, look how big it's getting now. Look at that. That's so cool. Never had one of my plants crest like that. Um, and I've only actually bought a couple plants that were crested. So it's pretty excited just to have one randomly do it for you. I don't know why, you know, it's, it's not something that is like, I don't think beneficial to the plant. It doesn't make it a stronger or a healthier or, you know, whatever, but I love it <laughs> when, the, when they crest. I just think it's really cool. Okay, so everybody down here, I gotta get, see I've got in that back corner, I don't know if you can see it because the sun's shining on my camera, I can't really see it. But that is, um, I think that is a uh, Straussii. And then there's more little cuttings from it right there. Because I had a big, originally in that same pot, that plant was huge. And it was like right out here in the middle and it grew into the ground. And then it just started looking horrible. It, you know, it was just root bound. And so I chopped it up and pulled it out. And I was gonna throw the whole stump away. But as you can see, if you can see, it's really grown back and it looks really good. I'll try to get all these little stuff back here, water. See, I did buy that little crest. I'm gonna turn my water down a little. I'm gonna knock these out of their pots. I gotta get back here. Okay, how am I gonna do this? I have too much stuff. Hold on. I'm sorry if I'm making you dizzy. I gotta get my hose around so I don't pull anything out of the ground dragging the hose across it. So I can get a little closer. And now, whoop, watch my hose. Put it over 
here, let it go that way. There we go. Okay. There we go. Now we can turn it up a little and really hit that Calisto. Calisto. How do you pronounce it? Calisto. Um, this Gasteria is doing really good. It's got a ton of little pups. This little guy looks good, but here's the other cuttings. But yeah, I was going to throw this whole stump out. And then, but look at all the new growth. So I don't know if I can hide that somehow so that, you know, it looks good, but whatever, you know, maybe I'll just leave it there, let it ride. I haven't watered any of this stuff in a while. And my little euphorbia here looks pretty dry. Let's soak that. Some gymnos. Get this guy. This one doesn't look real happy there. I wonder if it's too hot. Ooh. Ooh. Oop. I see all the writing has... Those are the worst labels. The tags... Oh, my mailman's here. I'm getting mail. Those tags don't last. The sun just fades them. Okay. Oops, I already did that one. Okay. Now let's soak this pot really good. Whoa! I'm going to fall. And then I got this other little stand of Simple Vivens. Now they're not getting really any sun here because of all these pots right here kind of shade them so they're all green and they should be a lot of different colors I have a bunch more in there that are all you know well started so when it cools down a little bit everything in this flat is going to get planted somewhere somewhere so these my little Dorothy is doing good it had gotten really stressed and turned orange which I loved but now it's green again because I started covering it because I didn't want it to get too much sun damage okay let me try to get out of here you know I would normally consider myself like pretty agile and you know <laughs> like a gazelle not <laughs> but <laughs> I'm trying to get out of here without knocking my plants over with the hose yeah I'm not very gazelle like <laughs> actually I'm never very gazelle like Okay, let's soak these guys. This little stand of plants is doing really good. I love it. Look at how happy they are. They get, you know, a little bit more shade behind the rock. Water my little stapelia. Um, All this stuff is, yeah, struggling. That little aloe right there, I don't know what that is. Um, it's really starting to grow. You know, it just kind of sat there and didn't do anything for a while. Oh, it looks like my, what is that? That balloon cactus is about to put off another uh, flush of blooms, so that's exciting. Oh, I do want to get my my desert rose. That's an odenium. Odenium. Is that what that's called? Look at how pretty that pink and blue one is. Love that. All right. So now we'll sew this pot. I do have this one covered, and they're still kind of, you know, shrinking from the heat from when I first put them in there. It looks so much more full. But look at that yellow sempervirus. It's so pretty. Okay. Here are the two tops of those. I think they are Pilo Cesareus, but they're not Azurius. He said they were, but I mean, they're green. They're not even close to blue. That's a Pilo Cesareus Azurius. And I mean, you can clearly see the color difference from the blue and the green. And these have been out in the sun all summer. So if they were going to blue up, they would have. Now the two pups down at the bottom did tank, but the tall one's doing good. I rarely ever water this pot, which is why that Portolacari hasn't done much. Um, this one's doing really good. I did treat it again because all these rear Higgins had mealy bugs and the Porta Lucaria still had mealy bugs. Um, I should treat it again maybe tomorrow early. And then here's another. This is in the Choya family. Hold on. Let me turn around here. Okay, that I grew up calling that staghorn. They grew all over Arizona. We find them in Southern California. And um, it's an amazing cactus, but if you put it in the ground, it is going to get absolutely massive and it gets these beautiful magenta colored flowers. Well, I had one on each side of the pool in the back in a big wine barrel and they had grown into the ground. Let's see if you can get a good look at it. Um, it is like super, super um, vicious. And 
the thorns are barbed, so if you get one stuck in your hand, you almost need pliers to pull them out. But they're very hardy. And we ripped one of them out completely, cut it down, and it had a trunk about six inches across. And it went out to the dump to the greenway section. We still have the other one to pull out. The other one is not as big as the one on the right was twice the size of the one on the left. But I did save this nice cutting from it. And as you can see, it's pretty thirsty. That arm is just hanging over. Um, but I have another one in the back in a pot that I've had because I do want to keep it around, but I will not put it back in the ground because I always tell myself, you know what, self, just keep it pruned down. Keep after it. Don't let it get out of hand. But guess what? I let it get out of hand every single time because I'm a procrastinator. You know, oh, I'll take care of it tomorrow. Uh, you know, when it's cool in the morning, I'll go out and do it when it's cool in the morning. And then I don't. I just don't because I forget about it Whew. or I get doing something else and I'm like ah I'll do that the next day so let's just take a quick look and make sure I didn't miss anything I think everybody got watered everything's looking really really good and what we should have I think the next week in the low 90s and then it's gonna go back up it's gonna heat back up uh, here's another Pilo Caesarius Azurius you can see how blue that one is and that's the one where the top rotted over the winter so I chopped it off and it's got two new arms coming up. So it should be, come around from this side. It should be pretty interesting. Ow, there's thorns everywhere. Yeah, so this should be, this should be pretty cool. I don't see any more. A lot of times it'll put off one at the bottom and one at the top, but this just has one, you know, the two at the top. So I will make sure to protect that this year because these, the Azuras, they're not frost hardy. A lot of these plants that I have are not frost hardy but I don't care because I want them and so now that I kind of know what's going to survive and what's not I'll know what to cover and I'll do it early like this rum runner I will make sure to protect that this year because I don't want to the other one's still alive but it's tiny because all the bottom leaves they just turned to mush because it froze um, and it's funny because this one down here is an agave Kishokan. Um, this one didn't show any signs of stress from last year, from the winter, and does really good in the summer. So I did buy another one. It's quite a bit bigger than this one, and it's over on the shelf behind the greenhouse. And so if I do expand more, you know, I don't really want to cut. I am going to pull out two of these roses over here because I don't like them. They're like a climbing rose, which they weren't originally, and they're all bunchy. Um, but I have been back to really taking better care of my roses. Look at this orange one. I love this one. And then uh, um, that one has a grapevine growing out of the middle of it, which I keep cutting back. And I did spray Roundup all over the grapevines at the bottom, so I'm hoping it'll kill that part of it off because I do like that rose. It's a nice one. This needs to go. I don't even have water to it right now because I, I want to rip it out. And that one needs to go. That one's just too hard to take care of. I don't like the small bunchy roses. I like the big, you know, these big kind of, look at that one, look how pretty that is. I don't know if you guys are rose people, but most of these I brought up from my grandmother's house. And, uh, you know, so they, they're just, they're really sentimental to me. Um, these two red ones came from my grandmother's. These two have that just, I mean, the buds are gorgeous look at those but they they have that really strong rose smell that if you ever bought like rose water perfume whatever that they used to buy in the old days rose you know the spray air freshener you know anything rose scented these things have that smell that really strong rose smell look at these pretty yellow ones this yellow one has struggled it, it's never I have this issue with the leaves which I, I seem to be, I think I've been, because I've been treating it, I think I'm, I'm getting past that now. But it has a sucker that came over all the way from like three plants over from that climbing rose. And it shoots up these big suckers here. And it's hard to tell what's sucker and what's yellow rose. Like this, I think I should just cut, yeah, see this is really floppy. This I should cut this whole stalk off. It looks like it's setting buds here, but I don't think they're going to do anything. I think they're just going to be scraggly. So, I don't know. But, I got so much more room that I could plant cactus and succulent. Like, this whole area, I don't have to run a drip line to it. I can put a little 
you know something right in here make it look really cool and I certainly have plants stashed everywhere that I can definitely fill it in and then you know if I want to run a drip to them because I don't know if my hose will reach all the way over here but I can just run a drip off of this hose with you know like a maybe a half hour per hour drip or, or smaller but yeah so that's it for today if you're still here, thanks for watching. <laughs> I can't imagine too many people are gonna stick around for a 45 minute video of somebody watering their plants. But I kinda like watching videos like that. I love to watch Laura Eubanks. I don't know if you follow her. If you don't, you should follow her. When she does her walkabout Wednesday around her house. I miss her old garden before she moved. Her new garden is absolutely beautiful and it's you know, getting more mature. It's been in for a year now, but I loved her backyard when she was in Chula Vista. Um, and I would just sit and drink my coffee in the morning and watch her videos. Uh, so yeah, so if anybody's still around, I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please think about doing that. And, uh, cause that makes me happy. And I hope you guys have a good weekend. I believe it is, is it Friday? I think today is Friday. Yes, today is Friday. So have a good weekend and uh, try to get out and do some gardening if you can, if your weather's nice. And uh, so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.